Early season Cape York. The water's deep, the track's unpredictable, and the mud is dead set insane. Do people really drive this? Right now, we're running winches on the middle of the Frenchman's track. Things are getting wild. Now, I'm in a real pickle here because the bank's got such an angle on it, we can't get his winch to pull him up out of there. So, I'm trying to do a double line pull from behind him here using a snatch block. I'm right on the edge of it. Tell you what, this track, she is a doozy at this time of year. Four days ago, things couldn't have been more different as we visited Cape York's most iconic destination. Here he is, how'd you go mate? Oh, a couple mate just released, you know. Yeah, you caught and released Just, just out of view of you actually, I caught him. You them. do that a lot, catch yeah. releases out of my view. <laughs> well folks, this doesn't need any introduction. We're at the tip of Cape York right here. Most northern point in the Australian continent from here. It's all downhill. They're exactly right, mate. It's... But look, a lot of people come here. Yep. This would be the end of their trip. They'd get their photo and then rack off home. Yep. We're not doing that. Our no. adventure begins right here. We've got a track south, as everyone does from this point. But we figured, well, let's stop in at a few of our favourite spots. And yours is? I'm going to Usher Point. I, yeah. We're going to be one of the first of the season to get in there. Yep. I don't even know if we can get to the beach. But hopefully mm, we can course. because I've got a little spot I want to test this rod again. Do you reckon we can have a crack at the Frenchman on the way down? Well, it hasn't been driven yet. I, I'm going to say yes, it has yep. not been driven. That No one's crossed the Pasco. All the water levels are really high this time of year. Yeah. I reckon we'll give it a go and see how well, far we get. Let's have a go. So basically our trip south is going to be an adventure in itself. Yeah, absolutely. You boys keen to head south? Sure. All right, saddle up and lock and load. Yes. Let's get into it. <laughs> now, the road into Usher Point leaves the Peninsula Development Road just north of the Jardine Ferry. And we're soon on our way towards this remote bit of coast. That's where adventure begins, boys. Once you get onto that east coast, it, it's so wild and so remote out there. I just love it. A couple of cracking campsites down here too, mate. We might even get to wet a line, boys, if you can. So you boys have been talking about for a little while now, so I'm pretty pumped to see what uh, is uh, the end of this track. I guarantee you, mate, you've seen nothing like it before. And um, Anthony, mate, that camper trailer of yours, we've got one of the best campsites, I reckon, on the east coast of the Cape coming up. Yeah, mate, I'm pretty keen to see it because I'm definitely painted the picture in my head. Yeah, mate, we'll get stuck into it, but this track is going to take some beating because it will be on the first down, I reckon, this season. Sure will. I've heard it's a bit rutted. I'll just follow you, mate. Can't go, well, I can go too far wrong, <laughs> but I'll, I'll do it as a game. Copy that. The wet season in Cape York can literally obliterate the tracks each year, and already the track ahead is starting to look pretty hectic. I reckon it's time to air down right here, boys. Old mate Shawno's up front in Sooty the 80, a rig famous for coating anyone behind it in a fine layer of diesel soot. And, <laughs> well, bugger, that's me. I'm wheeling my usual weapon of choice, an Isuzu D-Max dual cab ute. Now, aside from some touring mods and a bit of a lift, I'm running the D-Max pretty much stock. And I gotta say, it's loving the cape. Less stock of the lads behind me. I'm talking Sam and Andy from the online auto parts store, Sparesbox. Closing up the convoy is Anthony from Opus Campers, towing the most innovative camper you'll probably ever see. It's a self-inflating little beauty that sets up in minutes. It blows me away just how much one wet season can do to a track. I mean, look at that, that's... How does that even happen? Yeah, mate, water must just be ripping down this track and just completely erodes it out. And this is right at the start, so... <laughs> I think I'm going to have a work cut out. What concerns me sometimes too is it doesn't take, I mean that's a fairly big washout, but what if there's one that you just, you can't get through? Yeah, I mean we might have to do some track building or something if it gets too bad. Where there's a will, there's a way, mate. With some careful wheel placement, this washout isn't really that bad. It's just a case of keeping both wheels firmly on either side of the rut. With a trailer in tow though, Anthony will need to be pretty careful here. Yeah, that's nice work, mate. You made it look easy. The track to the coast involves around 60 kilometres of off-road driving, so we've got a fair bit of ground to cover. With the road full of washouts and ruts from the wet season, it's definitely a bit of an adventure. Well, it's the age-old question, isn't it? Do you carry one spare tyre or do you carry two? Well, look, I'm on the road traveling Australia nine months of the year. And in all honesty, I can't remember the last time I actually used my spare tire. So for me, these Bridgestones that I'm running at the moment are such a tough tire, I don't bother with carrying two. I only bother with one, and I can't remember the last time I used that one anyway. But what do you guys reckon? What do you do? Do you carry one spare or do you carry two spares? Let us know in the comments below, because I'd be really keen to find out just exactly how you tour around.
At long last, we make the coast. We get to visit some pretty amazing places on this show, but I tell you what, this bit of coast really does take my breath away. Well, mate, if it's views you're after, I reckon this doesn't get much better on the east coast of Cape York. Bloody spectacular, mate, look at that. It's just so wild over here. That wind's just roaring across. You can see coral reefs, termite mounds. Hey, place's got everything, mate. Notice the vegetation hasn't got a chance to grow very tall. I reckon I might have been born in a strong wind, mate. <laughs> I dare say, mate. Well, I'll tell you what, I love this feeling, jumping onto the beach, just after being in the bush all that time. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! One of my favourite beaches in Oz. Jeez, it's clean looking. Yeah, it is, mate. It's usually piled full of plastic here. What an absolutely stunning beach, mate. Oh, a little river crossing. Look at that. Yeah, be careful on that. You've got to come up that little lip. Yeah, it's just a bit soft. Oh man, this beach is epic. Look at that, mate, look at that. Oh, this is stunning, mate. I love this part of the coastline. Something about it, so raw. It's just unexplored down here. The coastline up here is often full of rubbish that washes in from the shipping lanes. But the beach today is looking particularly pristine. And the reason why soon becomes apparent. Mate, do you remember when I was saying um, we got down to Usher, had a little mission for us? Yeah, 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 uh, catch a barra. Well, that, that was a sort of an unrealistic mission, mate, but um, I've got another mission, and that's um, to introduce you to a couple of fellas I met up at Bamaga, and um, these guys are doing some really awesome things to keep tracks like this open. Yeah, righto, righto. What the heck is that thing? Yeah, well, that's them, mate, that's them. We've got the eight-wheeler here. These guys are cleaning up all the beaches, taking a lot of plastic away and stuff like that. Pretty much dedicate themselves to um, just cleaning these places up. What, by hand, just two blokes? Just two blokes, mate. No funny, no nothing. And um, I reckon we drop in and say good day. I want to check that beastie out. <laughs> yeah, what do you reckon they'll lose? Take it for a run or something? Yeah, we can only ask. These two legends are Benny and Jeff. They spend up to eight months a year in Cape York, camping and cleaning up the beaches all around this part of the world. They've soon got us pitching in to fill a few bags. And as you can see, there is so much rubbish here to remove from the beach. Would you believe it, before heading to Cape York, Benny spent seven years cleaning up the Whitsunday Islands. And these guys are entirely self-funded. Absolutely amazing and heroes in my eyes. To get around the beaches and mangroves, the boys wheel this insane little eight-wheeler amphibious all-terrain vehicle. Sean and I are itching for a drive. Fortunately, we've got an excuse, as the boys have a bunch of bags that need collecting up the beach. Leave the dream, mate. I'm gonna hold on to. Yeah, good this thing, mate. <laughs> now, Benny reckons that he and Jeff remove about half a tonne of rubbish a week. That means hundreds of tonnes of rubbish during their time in Cape York at an average of 100 kilos a day. In just one morning's work, the boys have cleaned up to a 100 metre stretch of beach and the bags are ready to pick up. It's as easy as that really. That's a 100 metres of beach yeah. and what we've got, a dozen bags. And those two fellas picked all that rubbish up in what, an hour and a half or something morning. like that? This yeah. morning, just walking along. Now they take it out, this all gets sorted, recycled, but the best thing is it's off the beach. And it takes nothing. They've got the rest of the day themselves now. Exactly so right. So it really doesn't take much at all. The weather's starting to turn around, mate. I reckon we get these bags yeah, back. Yeah, let's get out of here. People often think that cleaning up a beach is too hard for any one person. But these guys are proving just how achievable it is. Well, mate, I can't believe the job you guys are doing on this beach, mate. I've been here for many years and I've never seen it this clean. Thanks, Sean. It's remarkable, mate. So what's the big message here? Obviously, pick up after yourself. That's a no-brainer. But you guys aren't just picking up yourself. You're taking other people's rubbish away. Well, you know, we'd like to see if everybody could just take one bag of plastic off one of these beautiful places. Yep. It really would huge, make a huge difference. Certainly. Well, it's an easy thing to do, really. It took us, what, a couple of minutes to fill a bag up. Quite easy. Chuck it in the four-wheel drive, take it with you. If everyone did that, imagine the difference it would make. Mate, it seems insignificant, one bag, but overall, if everybody takes a bag, we could say 100 vehicles visit one of these places in a year, this sort of problem wouldn't exist. Well, mate. We can all make a huge difference. You are making a massive difference and you're keeping places like this open, which is very important to all four-wheel drivers. So Cheers, mate. I just want to say thank you for, for doing this, mate. It's a big job and um, it's mate, amazing. We love doing it and, you know, if it helps everyone be able to come and visit these places forever, it's certainly worth doing it. Yeah. Hats off to you, mate. Yeah. All right, I'm going to take one of these and put in the 80. Yeah, that's the go, mate. We'll take this out for you. Yeah. Good on you, Sean, eh? 
Now, look, I know what many of you are thinking. How can I fit a full rubbish bag in an already loaded vehicle? But you know what? There is always a spot. We're on a month-long trip up here, and all of us managed to squeeze a bag in somewhere. What do you reckon, folks? Would you be willing to collect a rubbish bag next time you go camping? Or let us know what you're doing to keep your tracks open in your local area. With our mission done, Shauno leads the convoy on to our next destination. I might um, go down to these cliffs down here. There's actually some caves down here. I want to show the boys. They're full of bats and um, just really cool little place to explore. The caves at Usher are only accessible at low tide, but it's absolutely worth the wait to go and check them out. Now, you usually come to try and spot some bats, but Shauno's found another prize. There we go with this. The boys are spotted a mud crab, so I ran in and grabbed him. He's a cracker too, a male mud crab. He got a claw on him. So many bats down this cave, they're all hanging up on the wall. There must be 50, 100 little tiny bats. They're all just hanging up nice and high. He's got to watch because they're flying out through this little corridor and um, you spook them, they'll, they'll fly right into you. No, he's not bad. Little fella, I'm going to chuck him straight into the Dometic. You might think it's a little bit strange putting a live crab into your fridge straight away, but what actually happens, the cold makes them go to sleep and it's actually the most humane thing you can do with a live muddy. Not to mention it'll be kept nice and fresh and it'll taste even better. After a great first day out at Usher Point, it's time to find a spot to camp. The wind is absolutely howling in off the ocean, but that's not going to put us off this stunning coastal camp. We've soon got the fridges out, an iron jack on the go, and camp set up underway. The swags are out, and Anthony does his push button setup trick on the OP2 camper, which is inflating almost as fast as Shaw can get his rooftop tent flipped over. How cool is that? With camp set up, it's time to watch the weather roll in and share a few well-deserved beers. As night falls, the wind calms down and Chef Shauno rolls in. What have we got going on here, mate? Mate, I'm just setting up the old OP2 here. Got the, the kitchen, kitchen going on. Have a go with this, eh? A bit more sophisticated than your setup, mate. Just a little bit, mate. Not, <laughs> this is like a full mate, commercial grade kitchen. Your beer goes there. You've got storage yeah. here. It goes in here. <laughs> Fridges yeah. right here. You've got a right here. another slide out oh. pantry here. Oh, mate, I was actually just about to start getting my dodgy setup going, and I thought, oh, do you mind if I actually use the kitchen tonight? Because oh. the meal I'm cooking is quite sophisticated. I need right. quite the fitting kitchen to go with it. <laughs> so if I can, can I take over your setup? All right, mate. Done. Yours. I want to do that. Can I have the right. keys to your fridge? Done. Pantry's there, you well, go for gold, mate. That's on me up because it's about to get wild. Well, shauno has got me a bit worried now. What are you planning, mate? Well, I'll tell you what, how lucky is this? I've got a real kitchen to use tonight, so it's probably fitting that I cook something that is, that'll do this kitchen justice. So I'm thinking the old one pot spag bog. Let's get right into it. So first things first, I've got to familiarize myself with the kitchen. First thing, jump into the old Dometic. What have we got in here, Anthony? I can tell you Damn. what, tell you what. How did you get, how did you Anthony get? Anthony shout, mate. Oh, <laughs> yes. Mate, this is not bad, is it? This is an amazing this kitchen. This is a good little kitchen. I don't I'm gonna... think you suit this. Well, <laughs> like a chef like me, mate, I can adapt to well, new positions. A I'm... short order cook like you doesn't even deserve this, but this I'm is. I'm gonna jump in his pantry as well, because, can you catch or not? Yep, let's go. Go, go, go. Oh, there yep. we go. Got it. It's got some chilly place, grab that. Thanks, mate. We got it here. Yes. Oh, here we go. Tabasco, we'll need that. that. And Italian herb mix, that's part of it. We're gonna need that. First things first, let's grab a cutting tool out. Very sharp, mate, so be careful. All right. What I wanna do here is just cut a couple of onions up. This is, you're thinking, spag bog. Sure, no, we know how to make this, but you've never done a one pot wonder like this one before. Let me tell you that for free. A couple of onions, we'll cut them up. Got a bit of heat going? Yeah, mate, yep. Uh, jump in the Dometic, there should be some garlic in there. And there should be some chilies too, man. All right, first things first, a little bit of onion, going yep. straight in. Yes, chef. Onion always first, wait about a minute till 
The onion goes a little bit translucent, that means see-through for those that don't know. And a little bit of garlic. You can't make any meal out in the bush without a few chilies. Now this, you've got a couple of red rockets, a couple of green ones. I'm going seeds and all. I think there's a rule with chilies. The bigger they are, the less hot they are. Try one of them. Give I can't, can't be too hot. Ready? Big ones shouldn't be that hot. Got a bit of it. A little bit of go to it. A little bit of go. How's that? That's good. Not too hot? No, nah, it's all right. All right, all right. What do you reckon the green ones are like? Probably like capsicum, hopefully. What are the green ones like? They might be worse. No, they're good. They're all right. Got a bit of go about them. They're all right. Okay, put them all in. Right, right. Put that. I'm going straight in with those. Straight in with those. Chilies, oh, onion. <laughs> like I always say, you don't need to know how to cook, but if you can get some onion going in a pan, you get a bit of garlic <laughs> and some chilli, you're halfway there. Probably yeah, oh, go on. one toss of the old... That's it. Yes. There we go. That's a fair bit. That's, a fair... That's enough. That's enough. If you're in the old school measurement, probably about three cloves this of garlic. Is a... Look at this, this is this looks beautiful it's over It's already here. looking good. I'm gonna jump in the domestic, get the meat out. I tell you what, it's it's harsh on the eyes though. We've got chili and garlic and onions down here. I've got the old uh, beef mince. Beef mince oh. is um, a staple of any spag bowl. What I've got here is I've got the old uh, pork spare ribs. Now these things are extremely fatty and um, you want that in a spag bog. That really complements the beef, makes it really nice. Chucking a bit of, bit of beef in, eh? This is straight from the butcher or cryovac. You see, when we do a big trip, we like to get meats out of cryovac because they can last a few weeks in the old Dometic, no dramas whatsoever. But next up, we've got the pork. We're going to get those out and we're just going to cut them into smaller pieces because the whole idea is this is going to infuse with the beef and create a little bit of fat, which is good. If you leave it for a couple of hours on a campfire or on a stove like this, you'll get yourself pork that just literally falls apart. So I'm just cutting these into smallish little pieces. There you go, that mate. Mate. Looking good. I'm about to chuck the pork in. Gives the old arm a workout. It does. It wouldn't be the first time on this trip, would it, mate? Nope, nope, nope. So we've got, we've got the pork, we've got the mince. Ah, we've got Graham ow. burning himself. Yep. <laughs> okay. Italian herb mix. We're going to rip a bit of that over his shoulder. Yeah, you go in there, mate. Fair bit of that. Oh, boy. We're going some chilli flakes, because four chilies just ain't enough sometimes. No. Tabasco. This one here is a habanero. How much chilli are you putting in this, this thing? This is going to... We're going to know about this one. You know the camera crew's got to eat this. Yeah. And they're, you but know. It's going to make it run faster up the hills, mate. Oh, it's true, it's true. Or run somewhere. <laughs> it's looking good. It's going to need some time, bro. It's going nah. to need some time. This is the thing. I like to add Whoops. all the sauces into the pasta now, so it actually cooks in a bit of moisture. So Italian diced tomatoes, any diced tomatoes, they keep in your full. I always keep these in the full-wheel drive. I seem to have gotten the raw end of the deal here, man. I'm like a, I'm like a stirring machine. <laughs> yeah. This you know, is... Don't wear out that wrist too early, he says, this early in the night. This is looking really good. This one here is the old Posada. Ooh, gee, I didn't expect that to... I'm good, I'm good. There we go. Just, Just all that in. Sorry, Chef. <laughs> hey, what's the rules about using someone else's kitchen? If you make... The mess, they clean it the up. The mess, they, they yeah, clean that's it up. What I thought. That's how it that's works, mate. That's what I thought. This is like the... The bolognese. Ooh, this is quite... <laughs> Slippery hands, man. Slippery, like, obviously... Could always do that in one go normally. Do you need me to get that? <laughs> nah, man. Just slippery hands. It's all right. I'll just slippery. keep, I'll just keep <laughs> stirring right. this thing. So that's a bit of the old uh, pasta sauce. You can't forget uh, the old There's tomato paste. There's a lot of ingredients here. I know. You've got, to, you've got to do this, though. You've got to do this. Put about half a... Oh, put the whole, put the whole in, thing yeah, in there. Yeah, go on. Why not? Yeah, that's starting to look like a spag bowl. Yep. We've got the mince. We've got the pork. We've got chilies. We've got onion. We've got garlic. We've got yeah. tomato paste. We've got diced tomato, we've got passata, which Goodness is um, a fancy thing. Mate, that's looking phenomenal. The look at that. The colour, this is, this is deep ruby red. It's Give like us a, a look at that. No, you can't the have any The pork yet. is looking good. So that's cooked, it's Yeah, cooked. that's ready to go. So, totally. so that's been about one hour on the boil here, so we've got it simmered down nicely. If you're at camp a little bit earlier, I'd suggest two to three hours. And that, that, the pork would literally melt in your mouth. We called it a one-pot wonder for very good reason. Mate, is there the water over there? Yeah. Mate. Now, typically, you'd cook the pasta in another pot. Not with this recipe. Yep. Wh whack that water straight into there. In there. So one cup, probably 
probably two cups of well, that, water. Well, that's all of it. Yeah, I've got a little bit of beef stock here, so I want to grab a little bit of beef stock, open that right up. So about a tablespoon of beef stock in there. Now, as you can see, it's got a lot more liquid in it, about two cups worth. Yep. Rigatoni time. <laughs> straight into the pot. Now that goes with the pasta, the sauce. Ow! Put it all in, give that a stir. I will. How are we looking, how are we looking? And that's what you do. You that, just put it in there. Exactly right, because the water, I've added a little bit more right. moisture I to the old uh, recipe here. That's going to soak up in the pasta, it's going to reduce yep. it down. Pasta's going to be cooked in like 10 minutes, so. That's a, that's a work of art. It's quite a lot here, so we're going to be having right. for lunch and probably tomorrow night's dinner too, mate. Wow, look at that. Well, there you go, the pasta's in. It's looking really good, and um, I reckon we give this about 10 minutes, maybe one more beer, sit around the fire, and that will be good to go. What do you reckon, mate? Mate, that is looking. It's looking good. Oh. Wait till that pasta cooks. So, oh. <laughs> All righty, look at this. How is that looking, mate? Smelling good? It's smelling good. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, yep. yep. That, that all the moisture's perfect. gone. We'll get the boys up. Yeah, we'll get, get the boys, get up, the boys up. Before they come, quickly, I'm going to jump in the Dometic. Oh, cheese. Mozzarella cheese. You can't yeah. have a pasta without cheese, Sprinkle boys. Sprinkle the mozzarella. Sprinkle the mozzarella yes. nice and high. <laughs> nice and high. It helps. That'll do us. Fair bit of mozzie. Look at that. <laughs> what have you done to my kitchen, mate? What is this? Oh, no, don't worry about that, mate. Don't, don't you, you worry, worry about, about that. that. No. Oh, yeah. Just get in line. The rules are, mate, if you, if you cooked it, no you don't rules. need to clean it, I'm pretty sure. This, mate, oh, you're getting oh. some of it in there. There you go. It's burning. Yeah. It's very hot. Yeah, yeah. About this. It's gracious, mate. It's super hot. I'll give you that for free. Oh. But the mate. taste is, more, is what is important about this one. Mm. Just because you do it in one pot, you don't sure have to cut the corners, mate, except for the washing up. Now, one thing I love about this is every now and again, you're going to get a little surprise mouthful, a bit of pork in it. And I think yep. that just adds that next little dimension of flavour. Mm. What do you reckon, boys? Are we on? Yeah. Best you've done. Really? Best meal you've done yet. And I don't say that lightly, that is the best it's not meal bad. you've it's done not yet. not bad, is it? Superb. Let's get around that for us. Honestly, try this out, folks. That is the best he's done. We wake to a wild morning at Usher Point. That wind is pushing the waves right up against the cliffs. It's spectacular to look at, but it also puts a stop to our plan to head further south to some mangroves to fish. Still, I guess that's part of travelling this time of the year. So we down some brekkie and come up with a different plan. With some coffee on board, we've soon got a new goal for the day and pack up camp ready to hit the road. One of the wilder nights I've had. Oh mate, how windy. Super windy. Incredible. That was that was probably the windiest I've ever been yep. up in the rooftop tent. He's still here though, so that's something. I reckon we can use this tide to try and get out of the, get off the beach. Yep, see how we go get up that hill? Yeah, and then make our way out. Go down south. Frenchman's? You okay. The boys are super pumped. All right. I'm pumped. We could be the first one to try and cross the Pasco this let's year. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's get down there and have a look at it. I said first. try. All right. I said well, let's try. get up that hill because that's the first little doozy we're gonna do. Yeah, it's gonna be hard getting off this beach. Alright, let's give that a go. I'll lead. Boys, just got that uh, exit off the beach here from memory, it's pretty soft. I'll give you a bit of space, mate. Yeah, just in case I get stuck. There he is. Just up here. Whoa, settle down. That sand is looking pretty treacherous. And Sean has to give it a fair bit of right boot to get through. I've got the advantage here of lighter weight, and the D-Max is up and out with no problem at all. Good line there, Sambo. Easy done. Anthony's giving it a real go here, but I tell you what, that sand is just a bit too soft. He's stuck, boys. This is the perfect scenario to use a snatch strap. The strap, of course, is flexible enough to allow the car in front to get up to speed before taking tension and limits the chance of the recovery vehicle getting bogged itself. Yep, go for it. And that's the beauty of a snatch recovery. With that little pull, Anthony is out of trouble and back on the track. Up ahead is the start of the hill climb off the beach. Now, look, this is gonna be a heck of a challenge. Oh, that's soft, boys, that's really soft. Sean is giving it absolutely everything. 
but you can see that even he is starting to bog down. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna make this. Go, 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 go! Yeah, got it, got it, got it. That's ridiculous. That's so soft. That was close, mate, but he's up. Let's see how the D-Max handles it. That's it for the power. Third gear, low range. Oh, eat that for breakfast. <laughs> now, that climb was hard enough for Sooty and the D-Max, and Anthony's got a trailer to think of, so he's wisely opted to stay hooked up to the spares box rig. Nicely done, legends. Well, that's Usher Point, folks. It's wild, it's windy, it's unforgiving, but it's worth a look if you're adventurous. For us, though, it's time to catch a ferry. So we're heading back to the development road. When it comes to driving down the PDR, you really do need to be on the ball. You've got to be able to stop at a moment's notice. And in a four-wheel drive, it's not too bad. Sometimes you get a scrub ball running out in the road. You might be following a road train that stops in its own dust. But if you're towing a trailer, it adds a whole nother dimension in, and safety is absolute paramount. Now, one thing you'll notice about towing the Opus here on the PDR, I've got one in Saudi and actually all my vehicles, is a Red Arc Tow Pro Elite. Now that is the latest when it comes to electronic brake controllers. And what I like about it so much is that you can actually set it up to manual mode. So you can actually fine tune the electronic brakes to suit exactly what you're towing and the conditions you're towing on. In my opinion, it's a must have, especially when you're towing out here in Cape York. Heading south, of course, means crossing the Jardine Ferry. Now this barge is pretty much the only way to get to the top of Cape York and back. Return tickets can be bought at the ferry kiosk when you first arrive. Jardine Ferry, pretty iconic if you ask me. It's not a long journey, but the crossing of the Jardine is one of the more unique Cape York moments and it's not to be missed. Thanks bud, have a good day. With the Jardine done, it's time to punch to our next destination, the Frenchman's Track. And I, for one, cannot wait. You know, a factor not too many people think about when they're heading up the Cape is the condition of the PDR and the damage that it can do to your vehicle. You see, we're all in such a rush to get up and do the tally track, the Frenchman, and all those iconics up there that we don't think about the corrugations and its impact on your vehicle. Drive too fast and you really are gonna do significant damage. So here's my tip for tackling the Peninsula Development Road, or the PDR for short. Firstly, drop your tire pressures. I go down to about 25 PSI just to smooth out those corrugations and make it so much more comfortable on you, and of course, comfortable for the vehicle. With that though comes a lowering of speed. My max speed on the PDA would be about 80 kilometers an hour, and yet I've had people overtake me in the dust at 110, 120. The PDA has long straight sections that can lull you into a false sense of security. Corners come up, you hit those too fast, oversteer, understeer, sends you off into the bushes. Of course, I've got the added benefit. My D-Max here is already pretty darn comfortable, but by following just a few basic safety rules out here on these dirt roads, not only are you going to be comfortable, but you're going to arrive safely. Speaking of arriving, I reckon this right here, turn off the famous Frenchman's track. Well, here we go, mate. I'm pretty excited about this one, to be honest. Mate, what I want to know from you is one thing, one thing only. Can you see tyre tracks in front of you? That's a big negative, mate. I don't believe... I, I believe some people have gone into the track, but I don't believe anyone has crossed the Pasco just yet. Well, the Pasco at the best of times is a doozy, so uh, I don't know, mate. Let's just get in and have a look. Yeah, do you want to um, take the lead, mate? That'd be usually the first person in the convoy has to go in the water first, isn't that right? That's how that works, mate, yep. Yeah, copy that, that copy that. You'll be right, mate. You got a recovery point on the back. Hey, hi, mate. I guess we'll just suck it and see. If we get there, um, find out how deep it is. I'm more worried about how fast it flows. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about depth. It's always the speed. That, uh, that does concern me a little, because a lot of snapping handbags in that river. We've barely even started the track and already there's signs of a lot of water. Now Sean mentioned the Pasco and before that we've got to get through the Wenlock River and a series of mud holes. This is going to be wild. Awesome deep. Oh, oh. I'll drive this. Alright, this one here is a serious bit of mud. Locker is on, rear locker. Hey, 
Hey! It wasn't as bad as I thought. This is what I love about this time of year. You just don't know. You've got no idea. You can get through this section. You're thinking, we've got this. And you get down to the major river crossing. No, no. But that is why we come up here at this time of year. I'm pumped, if you can't tell. I'm going to drive this. Second gear. Manual. Low range. And a little bit of boot. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yep. Yep. She's muddy. Yep. Not going to hang around. So far, so good. Oh, that was a window up job. Well, there'd be a lot of driving theories when it comes to driving deep bog holes like this, but I'm going to adopt the old uh, second gear low and try and push that skinny pedal through the floor pan. That's uh, usually worked out well for me, so <laughs> second gear. Let's get right into this one. Yes! She's like a boat! Here you get! Didn't get wet. All right, next bit. We've got like half a lake to get through yet. Second gear, that worked well. Let's go again. Easy done, easy done, easy done. Oh, I'm well, gonna stop right here. One thing I've learned, and I've learned it the hard way. Deep water crossings that are muddy like this one right here, put your windows up, otherwise you'll wear it. Matt, I've got a snatch strap on the bonnet, ready to rock and roll, but I don't think we'll need it. We've got this. We got this. Okay, Pjork was supposed to be hard this time of year. The word legend tourer nah, it doesn't gets get, around. It gets thrown around yeah. too much these days, and yeah, uh, no one's ever shops. called me that. But anyway. No, nah, me neither, mate. We could get stuck just down here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guarantee we will. Pretty stoked with that, though. You ready, mate? You got your swimmers on? Right. Anticipation's killing me. <sighs> here we go. All right, let's get dirty. Smell of diesel, success. mud. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's success. True. Several days in the bush without a shower. God, it's good. All right, Anthony, show us what that trailer can do, mate. Tell you what, these trailers really are impressive, and that is a good drive, mate. Mate, the big rig, she's doing so good. I'm not surprised it is an 80 series after all, but it, it hasn't skipped a beat on this trip. Why don't you go through some of the pre-trip preparation you've done to get the big girl in such good form for Cape York? Well, mate, you said at Cape York, we're up here and, you know, it's some of the toughest trucks you'll ever drive. And with older trucks, it's so important for maintenance. So with this girl, we did all the bearings, wheel bearings, greased everything, actually rebuilt the swivel hubs as well because they decided to let go after a recent trip. Um, and a full service as well was on the table. So it's all your filters, your oils, coolant, all that kind of stuff as well we did. That's the sort of things you need to do before a Cape York trip, really go through the whole vehicle and do all that sort of stuff. So. Mate, that's a good thing about spares box really. You can get all of that sort of stuff what, straight on the website and deliver to your door. Yeah, that's exactly right. But as well as all your service essentials, mate, we've got all the accessories as well. So if you really want to kit out your four-wheel drive for a cape trip with your, your comms, driving lights, snorkels, all of that gear, we've got it all for you. One-stop shop, mate. So order online, call up, and you can get it delivered to your door. Get Cape York ready and be out here enjoying these tough tracks. Exactly right. Yeah, how good does that sound, mate? All right. Well, it hasn't finished yet, so I'm going to get back into it and... Um, Try and keep up with you. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs>
As predicted, around the bend, there's more water crossings to tackle. We check the depth and then get into it. Yes! <laughs> I just made that. Just like that in the third gear for a bit of show. Straight to the deep one. Oh yeah. Straight. Never a doubt. Now there's no water over the bottom yet. Well, it's soft. Ah, that's a fine. Woo! This right here is our first big river crossing. It's the Wenlock. With soft sand banks and the real threat of crocs, this one is not to be taken lightly. And it's certainly not one to be attempting as night falls. Hey, copy up front there, Shorty. Yeah, I got you, mate. Mate, that sun's getting real low. Oh, yeah, up to you. But I think there's a good campsite on the left here before we go down to the Wenlock. What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, there's a good one. Just I can actually see it now, mate. A bit of an opening here. I reckon we... I oh, we make camp, mate, and tackle it in the morning. How about we crack a brewski, go down and have a look at it, and worry about it tomorrow? <laughs> I like your style of thinking, mate. Let's, uh, let's do this, I'm pulling in now. This little beauty of a campsite is just metres from the water, so we'll be able to tackle the crossing first thing in the morning. After a big day out, we're pretty keen to put our feet up around the fire, so we jump into getting camp set up. Hey, listen, what's your favourite camp setup look like? Do you go luxury or do you go simple? We'd love to hear from you. Liggity split and we're all set up and that Opus camper is looking pretty damn comfortable. Time for an iron jack or two or maybe three. I'll tell you what, how good is Cape York camping? This place has got to be on your bucket list, folks. Before we commit to crossing the Wenlock, we decide to head down for a quick look and check out the conditions. Sufficient here before. Well, <laughs> that's, that's as deep as I've ever seen it, man. And that's a spooky place to be at night. Thank yeah, goodness for really, good torches. Really but I think, I think, I mean, you can see the crossing. I, you can, I think, but there's like deep patches there, and it's flowing like really fast. This is the problem. I think in, in the morning, hopefully it'll make sense, but at the moment, yeah. I'm thinking. Yes, thinking. sending you across first, that's what no. I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm thinking that's really risky because you got the water punishing down there. Yeah. It's deep. That's soft sand. Soft sand, it's like three know. things you don't want in a river crossing. Well, this is night time, let's see what it looks like in the morning, I think. Yep. For now though, let's just say yes. Yep. Head back up to camp, have another beer, and uh, well, tomorrow's tomorrow. See what happens. Okay. okay, let's do that. Now, a few of you might have been wondering what happened to that mud crab. Well, let's just say it made the perfect end to a cracking day in Cape York. In the light of morning, the Wenlock looks as daunting as ever. On the menu today are the hardest challenges of the trip, full of deep water and thick mud. If you 
think the trucks are looking dirty now? Well, I reckon you haven't even seen the start of it. Tell you what, this time in Cape York, it's still actually quite warm and it really pays to have a setup that'll allow a lot of ventilation to come through. It keeps you cool at night, but more importantly than that, it allows it to breathe. Now this one here, the Adventure Kings Tourer, it's got really fine mesh on every single side. So it doesn't matter which direction the breeze is coming, you're gonna get the breeze and it's gonna keep the mozzies and the midgies out. Now Graham's in the Big Daddy Deluxe. Now that swag as well, same sort of concept. Both sides can roll up and allow that cross breeze to come through. It makes for really comfortable camping. Another really important factor when you're trying to buy a rooftop tent or a swag is the quality of canvas that's used in the build. Now this one here uses a very good quality canvas which actually allows it to breathe, which doesn't allow condensation to form, which is really important because we're using these every day. We want to keep them nice and fresh. With the challenges starting just metres ahead, it's time to pack up and get back into the action. I got a feeling that today is going to be epic. Right. Well, first challenge isn't far this morning. I went and checked that creek out this morning. Uh, fast flowing, really deep. It looks a bit better than it did last night, but still, we're gonna have our work cut out. Well, not one thing at a time. Let's get to the creek first, eh? Uh, you're up. Yeah, I might just have another look at this before I drop right in. This drop into the river is a panel denting doozy. Picking the right line is gonna be essential here to avoid damage. <laughs> this is one of the times I'm glad Shauno is up first. It's nice and steep, this one. I've got no choice but to really follow the ruts and just hope I don't touch the body on that wall. It's gonna feel pretty gnarly. Look at that, will ya? There's millimetres in that. Bunch should come down soon. There he is. On that line! Yes. A little bit of right hand down. Yep. And get out of here. Yeah. There, there we go. Making tracks. <laughs> we haven't even got to the hard bit yet. <laughs> yeah, mate. Come on through. Can't actually see what I'm doing here. Just gonna put this mirror in because we get a bit of issues here if we don't. How handy is that? All right. Let's see how we go here. It's really steep. Yeah, it is. It's like a mini gunshot, eh? And it gets steeper. Turn it a bit. Wowzers, that was sketchy. Glad to be down that one. I think the D-Max has actually pushed a fair bit of that dirt into the hole, which is probably going to help you guys out a little bit. It's looking like a, like a Cape Hill Highway. You're up, Sam. Show us what the big 80's got, mate. That old chestnut. That old chestnut. <laughs> Not the first, won't be the last. Let's keep this. It's down here. That's your line, bro. I'm going to try and do what you did, Sean. Turn into the bank a little bit, just because I don't want to do a uh, guard or anything. Yeah, copy that, mate. Copy. Doesn't feel safe, hey? Sneaks up on you. Yeah. Are we a passenger? Yep, we're, we're no longer in control. Uh, oh. Hello, Wolf. Straight up, Sammy. Mud. Well, we've got to bring Anthony down here now. I don't think he's going to have a problem. I don't think so either, mate. I'm just worried about that trailer hitting yeah. the bank. Um, they're built pretty tough, though, so I'd it'll probably just, if it does hit the bank, it'll just, if he takes it nice and slow. Slow and just, yeah. Once he gets to here, straight yeah, down. Yeah. 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 I'm going to do that river crossing. Don't even worry nah, about that. Yet. Well, it's for future me to worry about. <laughs> All right, let's go. Yeah, come on, mate. Bring it down. Now, this is tough country to be towing in, but I reckon Anthony is going to surprise us on this particular challenge. Fall into that rut, that's good. It's gonna be a fraction. Keep going. Gently! Anthony's leaning on that brake controller to get the vehicle safely down the slope. And then, well, hopefully, <laughs> the trailer should follow.
And look at that, will you? That is one tough trailer. Not a scratch on it. And a good drive too, mate. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> With everybody down, it's time for the Wenlock. Now, the crossing here snakes between trees and over a couple of sandbanks. Walking this one is pretty sketchy given the risk of crocs. So we're just gonna have to take a chance with the vehicles. I think I'm just gonna hit, hug those rocks yep. all the way up and then get a fair way up and then just cut across. I think with any river crossing like this, preparation's the key. So we're not gonna muck around while you're stuck in there. I'm not gonna say you're gonna get stuck, but we're not gonna muck around if you get stuck in we're there. We've planned so. every worst yep. case scenario. Straight out. Yep. Recovery gear ready. And just the winch is on free spool, so you can literally grab that. We've picked the tree out already. Yep. We've got the recovery gear ready. I hope they just drive it. No, yeah, I, think you, I think you will just drive it. Yeah. But it's um, going to be a big committing line. So. I've lowered the tyre pressures too. I've taken another uh, about 7 psi out of each okay. tyre. Yep. Yep. So good luck. All right. I'm not even going to put the windows up because I'm going to go quite slowly through this and just crawl. I've actually got Andy in the vehicle with me. Now, if something does go wrong, he's at the recovery gear. He's going to literally jump out the window, save him walking through this water. Could be some big nasty lizards in this water. We just don't know, so we're not taking any any chances. Kill. We're committed now, mate. <laughs> so good so far. We go. Yeah. Not too bad, mate. Not too bad at all. Not need the recovery gear, but pays to have it all prepared. All right, I'm gonna try and follow Shauno's route across this, which is in here onto these rocks, then up the river. Second gear, low range. Here we go. Bit of momentum up for the bow wave that's in it. Good there. We got this. Easy, easy, easy. Like a Sunday morning. One hand on the wheel, straight out. Look at that. Ready, mate? Got a crossing. It's got to be about 40 metres wide. Point up to that sandbag now. Yep. Keep going up that way. Keep. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to pop out the other side. Woo hoo! Right, Thanks, mate. Good drive. How good? You can get wet. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to attach this snap strap to the back of Sam's vehicle because if the camper trailer gets stuck, it's going to be right near this exit and it's really soft there. So. We'll just put that on, Sam will be ready. We'll just be able to tow him straight out. So a little bit of prevention, might just save the day. All right, Anthony, last man across. Good luck, mate. Anthony and the Opus are making pretty good progress so far, but the hardest part is gonna be the last section because it's already cut up after a few four-wheel drives have been through. All right, bring that in. Can you go back a little bit? Stop, stop. Like we thought, that last pinch proves just a bit too much. But that's why we've got the recovery ready, so that we can jump in to fish him out. Oh, we've seen so many people over the years lose their vehicles because they haven't had a recovery strategy in place before attempting something like this. A good strategy really will save your vehicle. Well, we talked about preparation before, and I don't think we could have got that vehicle out any faster than that. We saw it go down, straight in with the snatch strap and straight back out again. You'll notice it took a couple of goes because this river sand super soft, and with that water moving through, it actually erodes under the tyres. That's why you want to be so quick, because you would go down even further. The longer you leave it, the more and more stuck you're going to get. So it's pretty quick, mate. You've only got wet carpets, you didn't touch your engine, so you are sweet to go. <laughs> I wouldn't wear that for a while, though. No. Put that on the line, mate. She's clean now, mate. Just get these carpets out of here, eh? All right. Well, 
that's the Wenlock done and dusted. But if you think that was deep, <laughs> wait till you see the Pasco. And since I know you like to see it, here's the camera car's run on the Wenlock. The boys would hate to get their cameras wet, <laughs> so they're not hanging around. say that's probably the deepest I've seen the Wentlock by about I don't know four times it's got me a bit concerned about the next one the Pasco yeah mate I uh, I mean you know the Pasco it's uh, and on the best day it's a hard deep flowing river with a lot of uh, a lot of obstacles underneath so I don't know what it's gonna be like mate best we can do is just get down there and have a look at it yeah copy that mate hopefully we can make it through because I'd like to take the boys through the whole branch line here but um yeah we'll see what happens yeah, I agree with you I'd like to finish it um, I'd hate to have to backtrack but uh, safety concerns etc etc all we can do is go and have a look well folks you've seen us do the Wentlock we're about to do the Pasco very soon what is the deepest water crossing you've ever been involved in comment below and uh, let us know we'll be looking through the comments and I'm keen to see what you guys have been up to I think one item that a lot of people don't really pay enough attention to when they're setting their vehicle up for places like Cape York is their batteries you see there's all different types of batteries out there that'll go in your four-wheel drive but only a handful are built for actual four-wheel drive conditions. Now, I'm running the Overlander 4x4 batteries from Century. Now, one of the reasons why I'm running these particular batteries in Sooty here and actually throughout all my four-wheel drives is that they're built to handle the conditions that us four-wheel drivers go into. So Cape York has to be one of the toughest proving grounds for any product, from corrugations to deep water, mud, dust, you know, the toughest conditions in Australia, without a doubt, your battery's got to be able to stand up to that and perform each and every time. That's so true, mate. And speaking of performing, the next challenge is up ahead. We've come across this little crossing. It's like a ford. There's a river ripping through the middle of it here. I've not seen this before, which means that in the dry season, this is nothing. There's absolutely nothing here. Um, it's really soggy, and it actually comes down a bit deeper. You've got these two banks on either side, and you've got that there. An absolute doozy of an exit. I just don't know if we're going to get out of that. First, four-wheel drive might do it because it's going to be fairly dryish for them. Second, no way. Third, not a hope. First car. It's a camera car, so we'll send Shuey through, see how he goes. Now the camera car is usually the first car through a challenge while we're filming. The big GU is sure making this one look hard. There's just not enough traction near the exit, and the boys have had to opt for the winch. Look at that final pinch, will you? Now that is slippery. Oh, this one, super soft. That real sort of Cape York clay, that as soon as you get any moisture on it, becomes like the most slippery surface you can ever drive on. I'm gonna hit this one a little hard. Thought just a little bit of momentum would help there, but didn't really. We good? My turn. Ah, there's no floating across this one. I've gotten to the same spot as Sean, but it's just got no traction. There we go. Winch and drive, winch and drive. Let the winch do the majority of the work here. Thank goodness for a good quality winch. Take it away, Sam. It's rinse and repeat here as another Forby fails to make the exit. But look at that. As soon as Sam gets his wheels up, he's coming out under his own steam. That is a nice drive. What are we doing taking the camper trailer through this? Well, typically you wouldn't, I don't think. A lot of people who do this track would leave the camper trailer, probably yep. at Bramwall or something like Good that. Spot. Yep. And um, come and do this as a day trip, maybe two days if they're lucky. Yep. And um, But we are in the... We're in the camper trailer testing game, mate. Well, and this... Anthony wants this properly tested, and if it can handle what Cape York are throwing it, I reckon it'll handle just about anything. Look, it's going to come out with a couple of little dents and scratches. That's going to be normal. But if it can get through running, and I reckon no water in it, um, so all far, that kind so of stuff. Good. It's so far, better so good. Than the so far. Yeah, well, this is very true. It is. So let's send him through this. He's going to get stuck here. Yeah, but we're ready. We're ready. What have we got? 15 seconds. We're down to. 15 seconds is the um, time to beat. 
Alright, come on boys, limber up. We've got one more to go. Don't cramp up now. Recovery A team, coming up. Let's do this. Anthony's got the winch already spooled out and in free spool. So it's a matter of seconds before we've got him up and out of the water. And the trailer, well, it just obediently follows suit. As Sean mentioned before, it's often possible to do the Frenchman's as a one or even two day trip. But with so much water on the track, we're making slow progress and the day is starting to get on. At this rate, I don't know if we'll even make it to the Pasco before dark. And I don't think any of us wants to risk a nighttime crossing. As the sun starts to sink on the horizon, suddenly there's more delays. Right, just give it a pump, mate. Go again. That's a caliper, man. Little, little problem here with the spares box 80. Um, Sam noticed that the pedal went a bit soft. He's come out and inspected it straight away. He's seen that he's done a caliper. It looks like one of the seals inside the caliper has actually let go, which is not going to be an issue because we'll just be able to um, clamp it off so we won't have brace to this one anymore. He's actually going to jump on the sat phone straight away, order one from Spares Box head office, and um, probably within 24 hours have one down in Mariba. So it's no big issue here. Um, we'll just clamp this on and um, be on our way. Despite the quick fix, we've run out of daylight. We've made it to the edge of the Pasco and quickly check out the water. But with dark setting in, we decide to park up and take another look tomorrow. <laughs> with morning comes the realisation that it's not just the river we need to worry about. There are trees down all across the track and just opening up the track could take us all day. But everything hinges on whether that river is drivable. Well mate, sad to say, that has not gone down overnight. Well, as it mate, it looks pretty deep, but we're only going to find out once we jump in, I reckon. This is a part of the day that I don't like that much. <laughs> there are things in there that will... It well, could be. Look, it's, it's fresh water, but you can never be too sure of fresh water. Even fresh water will have salty crocodiles in them, and you just got to be careful. So I reckon we send Graham in first, I'll go closer behind. I can swim faster than him, doesn't That's matter. right, that's right, yep. Uh, nothing on me, mate. Who'd want to eat this? So if we get in the middle and it's like, if it's up to here, I'm calling it. I don't think even I'm... Up to, up to there on who? Like, if I'm just... <laughs> Sniffing me way across. Yeah, you should probably be going to start swimming. <laughs> if I've got to swim, we're out. Yeah, we're, we're out. out. All right, well. I'll have a look, though. Let's go and have a look. I'm going, I'm going straight, straight in. in. Yeah. As we jump in the water, the answer becomes pretty clear. Not only is the river deep, but there's a powerful current that could easily take a vehicle and strand it on the rocks or worse. Oh, mate, I've not seen a crossing as deep as that before. Right, there was one, there was one point. I wasn't just worried about not being able to get a full drive across. I was worried about myself. my life, mate, because I... I went into a hole that was about up to sort of over my shoulders and the, the current, I couldn't swim against it. No, I, I, I had a moment of panic. I think, what is yeah. the old rule? If you can't walk it, don't drive it. Yeah, I think so. There's no way you can. That sort of guts me in a way yeah. that come this far. Yeah. But this is the last challenge really in that. A lot of that, trees. There's a lot of trees over there. We yeah. had a quick look on the drone as well. I think it's going to go. It's I a little bit too early in the season, early. I think. Another month? Oh yeah. And you'll be doing. You know, that's the thing about Cape York, those water crossings will drop yeah. so fast. Yeah. But. That's not finished here, mate. We can't live here. Oh, that's right. We're going to get out of here. <laughs> We're going to turn around. Some of the tracks we know. came down. Would not to mention even the um, going back through the wet lock. We got a fair old day in us. All right. Well, new mission. New mission. Get out of here to the Exchange Hotel. Ah. Easy, I think it's a good idea. Let's get out of here. Okay. Well, now we've got a massive day ahead of us. We've got to redo the entire track, but we've barely even started when we hit our first setback. This stuff reminds me of black soil country that you get in the Kimberley region of WA. We've got through okay one way, but now the track has gone to hell. Just get a load of the camera car, will you? There's a fair bit of mud up ahead here. The track just feels like a sponge. Every time you're standing on the track, just water's coming through your toes. Heaps of mud, second gear low, and um, I'm gonna have a very spirited drive. Not make it far. Have a go at this. This mud, super soft. As you saw, I tried to take a slightly different line to where the wheel tracks were. Didn't make much of a difference. Just fell straight through. And I think it's the same sort of consistency right through. This is black soil country. So once you go down here, it's a pretty big pull to get you out. 
The boys get on the winch, but because of the length of the pull here, we're gonna have to do this in stages. This is gonna be one epic day of winching, and if you're thinking, why don't you just drive off to the side? That's even softer. Just gotta give that winch just a little bit to cool down. You always say it, but the old rule of 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off is just good practice for any winch. Sean's made a bit of progress, but it's gotten softer and he's digging down into the mud. It's time to switch to a double line pull. The advantages of a double line pull is that it's halving the amount of work the winch is doing. How good's this? What a way. Frenchmen, they said it wasn't going to be easy. <laughs> they were right. This is quite a challenge. the last stage here, we're winching off the camera car, which itself is secured to a tree. We'd be stuffed without the Dominator Extreme. After nearly an hour on the winch, Sean O's out. What an effort. Now I'm opting for a different technique here. I'm going low and slow. The plan here is to avoid bogging down deep in the mud. That's as far as I can get. It's time for the winch, but as you can see, the D-Max is sitting nice and high up in the mud. Real key to this winching operation is zero wheel spin. I'm not touching the accelerator pedal at all under winch. I'm just literally letting it just idle across the top because as soon as I go down and break that crust, it's game over if you saw. So I picked a slightly different line to the other boys here. I've come up on to the high sides, which are still super soft. Sam's just fallen in the mud, <laughs> the poor bugger and I'm just idling along. I'm not letting any wheel spin happen at all. Even if I fall in, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna power out of this. I'm just gonna let it chip away at it. And, seems to be working, eh, before? Yep. It's going well. As you can see, I've gotten through without too much drama. We're still a long winch, but nowhere near as hard as it was for some of the other boys. I reckon we could fill another episode with the time it's taken us to get through this. You can see here, Sam's opted for a very similar technique to my own. Low and slow, and let the winch do most of the work. We've had to use an extremely long extension strap here to try and get Anthony to pull straight through the mud rather than sideways, and that seems to be working. Well, there you go. Five hours, 50 metres. No joke, that black soil country is just absolutely deadly. Just clean up everything now. We've still got the wet lock to get through before we even think about getting back on the PDR. So. We're running out of light, it's my only concern. We'll be doing this in the night if we don't make a rattle on. So yep. let's get these recovery gear in the back of vehicles and um, see if we can make a mile, eh? Give them a go. Up ahead, we found a shortcut around the mud section that caught us all out yesterday. Now, it's a bit of a risk trying a new line, but it looks to have been driven, and with the day getting away from us, Sean decides to chance it. <laughs> and the result? Well, it's way worse than we thought. Do people really drive this? Did I say I had faith? It's time to get on the winch. Now, it's only a short pull, but that bank is steep and soft. Sean's got the front up, but now the rear is in the river. He doesn't want to go any further. The situation's even worse right now. Look at that, the water is flooding into the back of the vehicle. Things are starting to get a bit stressful. Now, we're in a real pickle here because the bank's got such an angle on it, we can't get his winch to pull him up out of there, so to try and do a double line pull from behind him here, using a snatch block. I'm right on the edge of it. Tell you what, this track, she is a doozy at this time of year. Even with a combo of both winches, the four-wheel drive is just suctioned into the mud. It's time for a new plan. Right, we can go backwards, so get the car back a couple of feet. We're gonna have to try and pull Shauno out backwards. First, we're gonna dig away a lot of this bank to try and clear some of that dirt. Then I'm gonna hook the D-Max up to Shauno, and the rear of the D-Max to the camera car as an anchor point. Let's see how that goes. Alrighty, finally, something's going our way. This seems to be working. Well, that was a no-go. We're gonna have to go back to the original line. Have a go at this, will you? How soft is it down there? We are making progress, though. It's slow and it's a race against the clock, but we're getting there. This is Cape York. How good is it?
How good is this, mate? That is next level. This has turned out to be one of the most wild Cape York adventures I've, I've done. I've got one like it, mate. This no, is not, and we haven't even, this is the best thing about it. We, we didn't actually cross the Frenchman's, <laughs> but this is so much Doesn't better matter. in so many Doesn't ways. Yeah. Near the Whitlock. Oh, in mate. reverse. At night. <laughs> it's right on dark now, and we're back at the Wenlock. Because we've done it before, we decide to give it a crack. Good to go. Born ready, mate. Right on. So you might see I've got Graham hooked up at the moment. He's not taking any risk right now. We're crossing the Wenlock at night. This is pretty wild. Whoa, look at that current. Heavy. I don't want to get stuck. I don't want him to get stuck. So he's a lighter vehicle that floats. We're going to do the same with the camper trailer. For this exit. Keep it going. A bit more, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Go, go, go. Easy as that. With Sean and I through, Sam hooks up Anthony in the Opus and starts the crossing. I gotta say, the Wenlock, just on nightfall, flooded, and this is one of the crazier things we've done. There he is, around that tree. Yeah. Oh, Dooley, that trailer got real close. Up to the left. Wenlock at night. Get in. Very good. Wow, what an adventure. I reckon I'll remember this one for a very long time. Well, mate, Usher Point, all the way down here to the front. I've never seen the Frenchman's like this. Didn't even never. cross Pasco. Never, Absolutely mate. insane, mate. This goes to show, though, like, we've just come the right time of the season. Like, it's, it's pretty extra. wild. It's pretty wild. Like, if you want to actually make the Frenchman's, probably come another month later. I'd go six weeks. <laughs> Not even a month. <laughs> Give it another dry six out. weeks. But this is really turned on. This has yeah, been mate. one of my favourite Cape York adventures. To share it with these blokes yep. as well. Next level. We've got these, mind you, They've never been to Cape York before. What a way to do it. Break him in the hard way, straight oh, into the yeah. Frenchman's in the wet. <laughs> Folks, that is the Frenchman's and Usher, like you've never seen them before. We have to come back because we have been beaten by this one. We've got to come back and do it again. Oh, definitely will be. Definitely For sure. will be. For now, folks, if you've ever done deeper river crossings than these bad boys that we've just done on this trip, I want to know. Put them in the comments below. You've done a couple of deeper ones. Done. Only just. Just, mate. So there was a couple that really had me worried today. I've had a couple and myself. Look, and if you just like the trip in general, yeah. make sure you just write a comment. We're always on there having a good yep. look. So like, subscribe. You know the deal. All that stuff. We'll see you next time on Four-Wheel Drive Action. See you, folks. Stick around, folks, for my favourite part of any Four-Wheel Drive Action episode. That's right, the outtakes. But first, some info you should know about the gear that makes these adventures possible. This is the point of the trip that we like to go through a few of the products and um, the companies that make these trips possible. Now, first up, where do we get all our spares from, mate? Spares box, mate. Absolutely, it's the only place to go as far as we're concerned. All the spares of the old 80, and um, I didn't need too many on this trip. Yep. Actually, Sam from Spares Box even needed to call up and use a sat phone and um, organise a couple of spare parts. Yep. Yep. But um, that's all part of four-wheel driving. If you go four-wheel driving, you got to break stuff, you're going to need to get the spares from somewhere. So why not get them from one of the cheapest and best places on the internet? That's sparesbox.com.au. They make it super easy too, don't they? Absolutely, so mate. It's a piece Quick of delivery, which is something that's music to my ears. Now, speaking of super easy, Opus Campers, mate. Literally, you name a camper that you can walk up to, push a button, Crack an iron jack. I can't believe that. And it just blows up. Yeah. Crazy. And then when it does go up, you've got all the creature comforts in there. You've got a little lounge room in there. You can sit in here and watch telly if you Not want to. Not to mention the kitchen, mate. Kitchen's I fantastic. You made a mess on that one. You did indeed. <laughs> Slide out drawers for your fridge. You've got everything in it, but I at that feature. Push a button, walk away. So what we've been able to do, we've been up, up here in the Cape, is just live like kings out of the back of a camper trailer. And Super nice for us. The fact that it's actually withstand the wind at Usher Point. You well. didn't go anywhere. Stayed there. <laughs> I thought it was going to be morning, it was going to be somewhere right down that, there, mate. but it wasn't. It handle, Look, it's done anything. water crossings, million corridors. Everything's still on it, nothing's fallen off it. Check them out, if you're in the market for a camper trailer, have a look at Opus Campers, they are the bee's knees. Now, here's a little product that you might have seen us use around, we were certainly using them every single night. As soon as the, the sun went down, the old head torches came yep. on, the torches, we've got a bunch of lights from Nebo. Now these things are absolutely amazing. If you haven't checked out Nebo, do yourself a favour, yeah. get on the website, they make lights for every application. I saw yeah. you Big Larry. Act actually using one yep. on the side of the old D-Max. It's got a little, it's got little magnetic base. I'll whack it on the side of the D-Max just there, put yep. it under my awning. And you switch it over to the red globe. It stops the insects. How yeah, good's that? How yeah, good's that? And they're all USB chargeable. Yeah, that's really smart. Even something can be used as a power bank. So if you want to yep. charge your phone or uh, little devices yep. on the road, you yep. can do that really easily. I think that's a smart little feature. Mate, they are the bees knees. You can't get camping with that torch. And bright, holy heck, get yeah. the big daddy out. And um, if you want to know what bright is, turns night into the day. So we use that actually on the wet lock to actually try and look see. For, look for crocs. Look for crocs. And we, then we got carried away and started trying to find cherubim. We did actually. That's true, we did actually. We can get carried away quite easily. Folks, look, 
Four-wheel drive action, the best four-wheel drive show in the universe. I don't know if there's anything better. I've not there seen it. it so, folks, subscribe, hit notifications, so you know we're putting out a new episode. And if you did enjoy this one, Let's put a comment it. down. You absolutely did. You, you wouldn't have been in this part of the show if you exactly. didn't like it this part. Exactly. Put some comments down the bottom. Tell us about your recent trips. Have you done the Frenchman's? I guarantee you haven't done it this year because we went as far as we possibly could. No one's been down there. We check all the comments, don't we? Absolutely. They don't just don't go out there. We absolutely. check all the comments. So stick them down there, subscribe to it, and we'll catch you next time. Can't trust that. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, too bad. Too bad. Oh. Yes. Ah, it's bloody spell. You'll be a bit. I'm going to be a bit. <laughs> My name's Graham Cahill, folks, and uh, I'm from Southwest WA. Oh, love it down there. Lots of jarra trees. You guys don't have them. Yeah. Who's who's? Oh. What's you consider this? Clap. Oh. Chucking a bit of bit of beef in, eh? You gonna cut that up? No, nah, no need to. It's yeah. Just, it's mince. Oh. No, it's already, no, already no. cut, mate. It's cutting us really small pieces. I used interpretive dance to explain exactly what I'm going to do. What do you think, mate? The theme? Whoa. Sorry. Are you going to do it? Hey, whoa, hey, hey. Whoa. Whoa. You're right there, mate? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just being excited. Just being excited. <laughs> what a beach. Hey. You, you said what did you do? Oh, beach. Right. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's a lovely beach. I think you should go through the ingredients for the folks at home, <laughs> mate. Be tonight. <laughs> it's slippery fingers. Like I must have onion juice on there or something. Is that what that is? No. Because <laughs> we can do it first. Go. Oh, go, go on. You won't do no, it. No, no. You, you keep going, man. You, you've got this. Highway to the danger zone. Don't go. I want to get really close to you. Where are you going? No, no, I want to be really close to you. I'm pressure. I'm feeling the pressure of you wanting to sleep next to me. Can I wear your thing off the bed? Yeah, right. I'm just gonna pour that over your knuckles like that. That's fine, man. You're right with that. You see the movie Ghost? <laughs> I have, mate. I'll be battery crazy. I'd rather if you didn't, but it's <laughs> alright. Yeah. Now we actually got sent Graham in to walk through this just before, and he's sunk. He's, he's gone. <laughs> That's not hard, we mate. Seen him it's since. probably only about a foot deep, then. Around two and a half feet, yeah. <laughs> I think we're done. Come on, just open it, bro. are making me eyes water oh, a fair that's bit. A, that's a cod, man. <laughs> that's a cod, man. Yeah, he's trying to. Uh, have a go at that. Have a go at that. It's really oh, quite difficult to open. Oh, that's a cod, man. That's a cod, man. That is. That's a cod, man. Did you see right, it? There you, did you, go. After, there you go. There the you go.